Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So I guess people probably want to know my opinion about this drama between Tariq Nasheed, Sarah, and Cynthia G. Well, <laughs> I'll just say this. That's none of my business. <laughs> just kidding, man. You know I got to talk about this, man. <laughs> Let me say this. I mean, so here's the situation for people who don't know. Tariq Nasheed fired Sarah live on his show about a week ago. And he fired her because, you know, first of all, they were talking live on the air. And he said, well, I don't trust Sarah. And I'm not going to go into the backstory of how he said, I don't trust Sarah. But eventually he said, I don't trust Sarah. You know, he was talking about how he thinks she's an agent because she keeps asking him if he's a pimp. And he's basically was saying, like, where is she getting that from? Like, why is she asking this question? And so, you know, they get into a back and forth. And, like, she's really trying not to engage him, like, not to escalate things. But it escalates anyway. And it escalates to the point where he just fires her and, you know, tells her to get out, basically, live on air. And so after this... Sarah was on Cynthia G's program. She was doing an interview, telling her side of the story. And essentially, during that broadcast and all that kind of stuff, a lot of people were criticizing Cynthia G for getting involved in it and all that kind of stuff. Later, Cynthia G took down the video um, and Tariq Nasheed did a, a podcast later where he was basically criticizing Cynthia G for getting involved in it. He was criticizing her for providing legal advice to Sarah. And um, so in response to that, while Tariq was on air, Cynthia G calls in and she says, well, she wasn't co-signing Sarah. She says that she wasn't giving Sarah legal advice and this and that and then you know after they had this brief discussion on the air you know Tariq Nasheed basically says uh, Cynthia G is wrong but you know despite him saying that she's wrong contrary to his nature and everything contrary to what he's known for he didn't roast her or anything <laughs> he didn't go off on her and I'm sure he probably wanted to, but he kind of restrained himself and all that kind of stuff because, you know, apparently he has great respect for Cynthia G, even though he disagrees with her on this. So he proceeds to disagree with her. You know, he says, well, you did provide legal advice. You were co-signing. You did have this other guy on there who was critical of me. And after making those comments, you know, he ends the conversation with Cynthia and he continues and then later on he plays like clips from her show a show that she took down after the fact and did a subsequent video explaining why and how she got involved in this drama i haven't seen that video where she's explaining how she got involved in the drama and blah 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 but i noted um she claims that it started on twitter and i don't know all the backstory about that but so as i was listening to Tariq nasheed you know, play these clips from our show. Um, it's clear what's going on, and I'm just going to share my views about the situation. First of all, like with respect to whether or not Tariq Nasheed should have fired uh, Sarah, you know, I just want to share my views about that real quick. First of all, I think that if it was any other employer who, um, had an employee being insubordinate under whatever circumstances. You know, if you're working for somebody, you're not supposed to be insubordinate. So, you know, just watching the clip where this whole thing escalated, you could see to a degree that she was insubordinate. So I could understand why, just based on that alone, he could fire her. You know, you have the right to fire somebody for insubordination. 
and also I mean in any other kind of situation if an employee constantly questions the background of their employer you know and questions you know the character of their employer I mean it's it's likely that that employer may decide to fire that person so from that perspective, you know, I could see why he would fire her, you know, just based on that kind of stuff. And it's his right to fire her. I mean, he is an employer. You know, he can fire her for those reasons. So, you know, that's my position with respect to that. And also, with respect to Sarah, you know, the fact that she raised these questions, I mean... It seems like when you decide to work for someone, the first thing that you do before you even sit down to interview with that person is you do research on that potential employer so that you can understand what that employer is about, the mission of that particular company, you know, the history of it, the track record of that company, so that you know what you're getting into, so that you'll know the culture to expect in that new environment. So that's something that any employer, you know, any potential employee will do if they're doing their due diligence. You know, if they want to be prepared for an interview or if they just want to know what they're getting into, if they want to know what kind of culture they are basically going to be a part of, what kind of corporate, corporate culture they're going to be a part of, they do their own research ahead of time. So one would think that Sarah would have done her research about Tariq Nasheed. So she wouldn't have had to ask questions about his background, like questions about if he's a pimp and this and that. It seems like that's a question that one would ask on the front end instead of the back end. And anybody that does a search on YouTube or on Google, they will see that Tariq Nasheed whether or not he was a pimp, you know, I don't know if he was a pimp or not. Whether or not he was a pimp, he promoted the pimp lifestyle. I mean, he promoted pimp imagery. He promoted pimp sayings and pimp customs. And just the whole pimp, pimp ethos, you know, that's what he promotes. You know, in his books, he's written several books about macking women. So anyone who had done their due diligence would have known about that history. They would have known about the Mac lessons and all these books. They would have known about all this pimp imagery. They would have known about him appearing in a Michael Moore movie, pretending to be a pimp, if he's pretending. You know, I don't know the story. One could say, well, that's satire and this and that, and it's, it probably is. But the fact of the matter is he was celebrating and glorifying pimp culture one way or the other, you know, through his books, through the imagery, the photographs, and by actually playing a pimp in a documentary, basically doing what he criticizes other people doing, and that's cooning. That's just straight up cooning. There's no justification for it. There's no explanation for it. You know, and perhaps he's evolved and he no longer um, does that kind of stuff. I mean, apparently he doesn't do it anymore, but he still kind of celebrates the player mentality and stuff like that, just with his whole program, the ism. And I, I watched a couple of shows and it's about teaching game and all this and that. Not necessarily pimping per se, but how to be a player and all that kind of stuff. So the bottom line is this, anybody doing their research would have known about this stuff. It wouldn't be a shock about him, you know, promoting this pimp image, whether or not he is an actual, you know, was or an actual pimp. They would have known this stuff. So it wouldn't become like some big surprise or some major shock or anything like that. And the fact that Tariq has these images out here, these books out here, these videos out here, you know, him participating in a film, pretending to be a pimp. Because of all that, you know, that huge uh, digital footprint all on the internet, he shouldn't be shocked, shocked and surprised that someone would ask him whether or not he's a pimp. So that's the, you know, another point that I, I need to make. You know, so, you know, the fact that he's taking aback and he's 
so shocked and appalled that somebody would ask him if he's a pimp. You know, I just think that that's disingenuous. You know, I think that is, <laughs> I mean, that should be expected. You know, that should come with the territory. So that's one thing that I need to say. You know, that's another point. Now, the, the last point that I want to make is with respect to Cynthia G, you know, basically trying to play the role of innocent and trying to basically say, well, she didn't have nothing to do with this stuff. She, she was just drawn into this drama against her will, basically. And she's innocent <laughs> and all that good stuff. I mean, and she's saying that she didn't give legal advice and blah, blah, blah. But if you if you listen to her show, I mean, first of all, as Tariq was pointing out, I mean, she had this guy on there who was highly critical of Tariq. So you can't be saying that you're playing, playing um, you know, some innocent bystander when you had this guy on your program trashing Tariq. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is you have the woman who's, um, you know, who has all these negative things to say about Tariq, you know, this woman who was fired and stuff like that. You have her on your program sharing her views, you know, nothing that she's saying was being challenged by anybody on there, at least from the part that I heard. And then on top of that, you know, you had people recommending, certain, you know, saying that they know the attorneys and blah, blah, blah. And she, you know, made sure that this guy, this girl, Sarah, had the information, the contact information and all that kind of stuff for those people who know attorneys and stuff like that. And then on top of that, you had her basically saying that somebody in Tariq Nasheed's position could be um, sued for defamation and other types of claims as a result of how things unfolded on that show. I mean, that is a form of legal advice. And all that stuff put together basically means that you were involving yourself in a conflict you were involving yourself in a situation. So it's difficult to play the role of innocent victim. It's difficult to pretend like the conflict has nothing to do with you when essentially for all intents and purposes, you were basically co-signing Sarah. So that's what I have to say about that. And it just comes off, um, it just undermines your credibility when you say, well, I'm not, I wasn't providing legal advice when anybody watching the video can reach that conclusion that you were in fact providing legal advice. So, you know, that's what I have to say. Um, you know, I just think it's unfortunate that um, things like this have to happen. That um, instead of addressing, you know, this issue of racism and these problems that our people are confronting, you got black people basically going at each other. And, you know, it's not to, you can't expect us to live in a utopia where there are no disagreements among black people and all that. But it's just an unfortunate situation, man. And the whole, the one thing that I want to make, last point that I want to make about this is this. I mean, you know, the fact that Tariq has this, this history of, you know, promoting this negative pimp image and, you know, these books that basically talk about getting over on women and how to manipulate women and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, just his track record of making statements that are um, not necessarily um, good for black women, you know, to say the least, <laughs> to make an understatement of it. I mean, when you pile it on top of him, you know, firing this woman the way he did, you know, I think he could have handled it in a different kind of way. I think he could have fired her in a different kind of way. Um, it didn't have to be all aired out live and in a public fashion. So those are my thoughts. Tell me what y'all think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.